Welcome to Short Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for a poetry discussion, which will, of course, appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, the poetry discussion playlist, but number two, the uh, Charles Bukowski playlist. Now, I am sick for about the 14th time this winter, so you will have to deal with my voice, my hair, the fact that this video is not the video that was scheduled to come out, and for all of those things, I apologize. But in keeping with the theme of being sick for so long and so often, the poem in question is The Night I Was Going to Die by Charles Bukowski, and it reads as such. The night I was going to die, I was sweating on the bed, and I could hear the crickets and there was a cat fight outside, and I could feel my soul dropping down through the mattress. And just before it hit the floor, I jumped up. I was almost too weak to walk, but I walked around and turned on all the lights, and then I went back to bed, and it dropped down again, and I was up, turning on all the lights. I had a seven-year-old daughter, and I felt sure she wouldn't want me dead. Otherwise, it wouldn't have mattered. But all that night, nobody phoned. Nobody came by with a beer. My girlfriend didn't phone. All I could hear were the crickets, and it was hot. And I kept working at it, getting up and down, until the first of the sun came through the window, through, through the bushes. And then I got on the bed, and the soul stayed inside at last, and I slept. Now people come by, beating on the doors and windows. The phone rings. The phone rings again and again. I get great letters in the mail. I hate letters and love letters. Everything is the same again. So reading this poem, sort of, it feels as if the author, the speaker, I guess I should say, is on the precipice of some type of cardiac event or possibly... Uh, a stroke or something like that, uh, it feels, you know, that the speaker feels himself dying. It seems, like a, like I said, a cardiac event. It seems like some type of uh, stroke, something. But that is never said. <clears throat> the statement is made, the night I was going to die. That's all we get. We are not even necessarily told that this is a literal death. In fact, so there's two real possibilities here. There is self-deletion, which maybe, right? If the speaker is sitting in bed and feels himself on the precipice of making that decision, the existential decision, the decision we all have every morning to make, will I go on today? And if he feels himself erring too far towards the, you know what, why? How come? He gets up and walks around, does something kinesthetic, moves a little bit, and it gets him out of that rut. Or... This could be that he feels what is what is living. To die is the opposite of being alive, but do we have to actually be dead to not be alive? Is it possible to go through your life on a day-by-day -day basis and never really be alive? To be among the living, to be moving around, but never really be alive? To be all but dead. To be dead in essence. To have passed. To be past tense for those who are experiencing life. In both of these cases, literal death and metaphorical death, the interesting thing to note is that they are often... What happens? Someone turns the lights off, right? It's darkness. Things fade to black. Every time, he goes around and turns all the lights on. 
Why is he going around and turning all of the lights on? Why does our speaker need the lights on? If this is a literal death that our speaker is facing, turning the lights on would be uh, akin to splashing cold water on your face, right? Bringing you back, reviving you in that fashion. If this is the metaphorical death, the no longer being alive insofar as it pertains to being a human, right? You can be a life form, but not be a human, not have your friends, not have your uh, passion, not have your family, not have any of these things that speak so specifically to the human experience. Turning on the lights would again rise to the level of metaphor and would be, would mean that what he's doing is he's looking. And indeed, once we start turning those lights on, he finds, metaphorically, that he has a seven-year-old daughter. If you were making the... So... If you were making the choice to no longer be a human being, if you were making the choice to just kind of check out of the human part of life... Is that a question, is that an answer, I guess I should say, which is reversible? Much like literal death, it may be that checking out of the humanity part of being human is irreversible. You can't go back. So, the seven-year-old daughter, not wanting me dead fits both the literal death and the metaphorical death. But also, finding out, or not finding out, that's a, that's a different poem. Remembering that the seven-year-old daughter is a valid reason to be alive is a valid reading for both physical, for both literal death and metaphorical death. So I'm not sure we ever really get an answer here. I would err towards the metaphorical death. I would err towards this is the individual struggling with whether or not being a human is worth all of the human pain that comes with it and deciding I might just close off completely. I might disappear. I may revoke my human card. I may kindly bow out. And the reason I err towards that reading of this poem is that the, the real kicker here seems to be for our speaker that that night nobody came by with a beer. Nobody called him. It was him and the crickets. And it was so hot. But at the end, now people are coming by. People are calling me on the phone. I get all of these letters, even the hate letters. Even the hate letters are great letters because they remind me that I am part of this weird thing called the human experience. And it's... It's difficult, I think, because in the, in the metaphorical aspect of this poem, it's difficult because you think of poets as sensitive, right? Meaning they feel so many things. That's how they get the work that they get. That's how they do the writing that they do. You, you, don't, get, you don't get to turn the knob on that, do you? Do you get to just turn it down? Do you get to just broil as opposed to completely bake? Do you get to just experience a little bit of that? Or do you have to experience everything that you experience or nothing at all? It seems to me that's a little bit of what our speaker is struggling with. Do I experience everything or nothing? And comes to the conclusion, maybe everything 
is the correct answer. That's all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance, but not design, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel. There's poetry every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.